G'day guys, how's it going? It's Cody Orgel from CycleTravelOverload.com coming back to you guys with another video. In today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the best touring bikes for 2022. Touring bikes have a special place in my heart personally. In today's day and age, like gravel bikes have just taken the scene by storm and have become really, really popular. And they're amazing bikes for touring. They're just the perfect all round bike really, in my opinion. And I feel like touring bikes have sort of fallen off and were once the ideal bike for adventures. I feel like they don't get the attention they really deserve. And to be honest, like my first ever bike that I had on an adventure for an adventure was a, a touring bike. It was the Navara Randini, uh, an old school touring bike. And then I went to the Surly Long Haul Trucker. Just amazing, strong, well-built, bikes from steel which is why I love steel as a material for adventure bikes and they're just bikes that are built to be stable to carry heavy loads of gear and ride across countries explore just the depths of unknown places it just really sings to me and I love touring bikes because of that so in today's video we're gonna touch on some of the best touring bikes I had a bit of a criteria when it comes to selecting these bikes. So for example, the geometry had to include some certain sort of specifications. It needed to have a decently long wheelbase, a decently long chainstay, long enough chainstay so that your heel is cleared for when you're pedaling if you're running rear panniers. And the wheelbase needs to be long enough so it creates stability so that uh, center of gravity is, is well balanced along the width of the bike, creating a more stable riding feel. Also with a front center of around 600 millimeters, that gives you enough clearance up front between the fork and your toe will be pedaling to clear front panniers if you want to run front panniers. And typically if you're wanting to do an all around the world adventure, like a front and rear pannier setup is most traditional for a touring bike. And then creating more predictability and stability in the front handling of the bike. A 60 mil to around a 70 mil trail is ideal for that. And then also for an upright riding position for multiple days, months, years on end while riding a bike, a touring bike, the stacked reach ratio ideally should be around a 1.5 and up to create a bit more of an upright riding position. You don't want something that's, you know, 1.45 or 1.4 that's like a road bike sort of specification where you're sort of hunched over. It gives you a sore back after a long time. Another big thing to consider with touring bikes is their gear ratio and especially their granny gear, but also their largest gear as well. You want a really good range, a gear range, and a touring bike, a really good touring bike provides like the ultimate range of gears. Anywhere from like a 20 inch to a, maybe up to 25 inch, or even lower than 20 inch, some are 18 like a mountain bike gearing for climbing. It's obviously a heavy setup, and if you're riding up real steep hills and stuff, a really low climbing gear is perfect so you can spin the pedals and, and not have to get off the bike and push it. And then also a 120 inch uh, largest gear for riding downhill is typically enough, and it does help when you have a lot of weight under you as well to ride down those hills but then also not spin out as well but typically if you're just rolling downhill on a touring bike you don't really have the desire to pedal fast anyway because you're just cruising along just enjoying the scenery you know so it's not like a race pace thing but it's ideal to have that really large range and these bikes do offer that for you. Just also worth noting like a 25 inch is more ideal for like lighter touring. So if you're planning to do sort of like bike packing or lightweight bicycle touring, a 25 inch climbing gear be enough to get you by. But if you're looking for full fledged like expedition adventures, 20 inch and, and below is pretty much ideal. Also weight is somewhat important, but when it comes to touring bikes, that's kind of thrown out the window. Most of these touring bikes are 13 kilograms heavier 14 15 kilograms something like that is your typical weight for a touring bike when you add on racks panniers all of your gear you're looking at a bike that's 30 40 to 50 kilograms depending on how long you're riding for where you're riding and all that kind of stuff so many variables but weight doesn't really matter too much on a touring bike however i've put it in there just so you know 
And then also wheels and components, another thing to consider. All these bikes are decent enough quality components. I made sure of that because I don't want to recommend a bike that's just going to break within a couple of months on adventure and stuff like that. Also the wheels, you ideally want, it's, it's obviously ideal to have more spokes on the wheels if the bike is obviously heavy. So anything over 32 spokes, 32 to 36 spokes, something like that is perfect for a touring bike. And all the bikes in this list do have that. To start off the list, we've got the Kona Sutra. This is my personal steed of choice. I do have the Sutra LTD, which is their sort of more adventure, off-road, bikepacking focused bike. It does come with gravel sort of specs and all that kind of thing. But the bike I'm talking in particular for this video is their SE model, which is their touring bike option. So this comes with fenders, rear rack, you get a brook saddle, all that good stuff. And even bar end shifters for traditional bicycle touring aesthetics. Again, I personally ride this bike frame and everything's the same. All this, the specs in terms of the geometry is all the same. And I really love how the bike handles. I actually did ride the touring bike version of this bike, which would have been 2020's model a few years back when I was purchasing my bike to test ride it. Riding around the streets of Melbourne, it was amazing. And again, these bikes aren't listed from like best to worst. It's just an all-encompassing list of all the bikes because all these bikes are pretty damn good. And I didn't really want to pick one over the other um, because they're all pretty capable touring bikes. So obviously with this bike, you get a much better range of gearing than you do with the one by setup for the gravel version of the bike that I have. It can fit up to uh, 29ers by 2.3 inch tires and that's without fenders. So if you want to go wider, you can. You can get some real nice, durable, touring, wide tires on there. The tires that come with it are the Swelby Marathon, which are a 700C by 40 tire. And yet, if you do want to do some off-roading, then this bike has that capability, which is good to know. So if you do want to switch it up a bit, chuck on some mountain bike tires and just go shred some trails. It's like the ultimate touring off-road bike that just ticks all the boxes for me personally. And that's why I recommend it. So prices start at around $2,099. Weight is 14 kilograms or around just under 31 pounds. The frame is full steel and full steel fork. Group set, you get the Shimano Dior, which is a 26 by 36 by 48 crank and an 1136 tooth cassette which results in a gear ratio of 19.9 inches to 120.5 inches. Stack to reach ratio is your 1.56. Chainstay is 445 millimeters. Wheelbase is 1,073 mils. And finally, the trail is 71 mils. Next up is the Trek 520, and this is their longest running model in the Trek lineup. I think of all of their bikes, this is the bike that's been around the longest, which is kind of special. And it's their touring bike. It comes with a Bontrager front and rear uh, rack setup and the front rack on this bike is, is really cool you get like a front load setup so you can use it as like a, a pizza rack rack and put stuff flat on top uh, it doesn't come with bar and shifters and you get the wacky like sort of slip your foot in pedals which personally I don't like but you know you can just change those out no stress but it's a true touring bike that is built to carry you and all your gear on long journeys wherever you plan and it does feature a stable and comfortable touring geometry so you get that 1.49 stack to reach. You get a 450 chainstay, wheelbase of 1,048, a trail of 65 mils, and a gear ratio that is pretty damn similar to the Sutra at 19.8 inches to 119.8 inches. And that's thanks to the 48 by 36 by 26 tooth crank set up front and the 1136 tooth cassette in the rear. It is a bit of a heavier bike by like 200 grams to the Sutra. And this is probably because you do get that front rack at 14.2 kilograms or 31.4 pounds. And price is just over 1800 bucks. Pretty good value right there. With a max tire clearance for up to 29ers by two inches. Also the Trek 520 has a steel frame and alloy fork. I probably wouldn't prefer over a full steel build. I'd much rather a full steel build if I was doing some real hefty adventures with gear and stuff. I'm not sure I trust aluminium. 
although some people do say that alloy is a perfectly fine material for bicycle touring but just for my peace of mind i would prefer steel any day of the week next up is the Fuji Touring Disc Touring Bike. This is said to be a, a really great bike for, you know, your typical bicycle touring, obviously. It is a lighter bike, so it's still a full steel build. You get that rear rack, you get bar and shifters, you get front eyelets on the fork, like the previous two bikes as well that I didn't mention. You get mechanical disc brakes, and it features a longer wheelbase and a, a lower bottom bracket for extra stability, like most of these bikes. And it's the cheapest bike that we've mentioned so far on this list at just under 1500 bucks. And it's also lighter, like I said, at just under 13 kilograms, which is pretty light for a full steel touring bike. It comes with a 48 by 36 by 26 crank and an 1136 cassette in the rear, resulting in a 19.6 inch climbing gear and an 118.78 largest gear, rolling on 700C by 35 mil tires, and you get max tire clearance for up to 38 wide tires with fenders. And if you wanna roll without fenders, you can fit up to 40 mil tires. And looking at the geometry, it's perfectly upright at 1.59 stack to reach ratio. You get that 450 chainstay, a wheelbase of 1,048 mils and trail of 62. And that bottom bracket is right down to 78, which is much lower than the two previous bikes we've already mentioned by like over five mils. Next up is the Trek 520 Grando. Okay, I just mentioned the Trek 520 touring bike. That's their full-fledged touring bike, but this option is more suited for lighter bicycle touring. So if you're wanting to do some credit card touring, just some weekend or adventures, pack up the panniers and head out for a couple of days and come back. This bike is perfect. It comes with a front rack. It doesn't come with a rear rack. I kind of like it because it's adding a bit of a, a bit of a style, a bit of a personality to bicycle touring, if you say. Especially with the design of the frame. It's got some cool little uh, patterns going on there. I like the color scheme, but it features that Bontrager front rack that I mentioned was on the Trek 520 touring bike. And I really dig this rack. It's just, it looks cool and the functionality seems really cool as well. So if you've ever wanted to give front-loaded touring a go, run, running the front panniers up front, and then maybe running a saddlebag on the seat post at the back, it's kind of a mix between a touring bike and a, and a bike packing bike. And also it's just under a kilogram lighter than the 520. So if you're looking to do lighter touring, like I said, and potentially pack around 10 kilograms of gear onto the bike, this is perfect. Because you do get a steel frame, but you do get an alloy four, like the previous bike as well. Everything is pretty much the same to the 520 Touring bike, except obviously the aesthetics and you get a different saddle. And then you have the 2x10 GRX 400 group set and slightly wider tires at 700C by 40 mils. That sort of more gravel focused gear setup gives you a 21.56 inch climbing gear and an 105.5 inch largest gear, which is a bit more less than most of these other touring bikes for going downhill and also for climbing ever so slightly. So Trek say that this is their steel adventure bike made for off-road excursions. Often put in that category of gravel randoneering. They say this bike's nimble streamlined setup and rugged parts spec is perfect for bike packing and gravel riding. It weighs in at just under 13.3 kilograms or around 29.27 pounds. Priced at just over 1800 bucks. And the geometry is pretty spot on to the 520. And here I say that I don't trust alloy and I'm recommending a full alloy bike. It's just under $1,500. Um, I should mention what the bike is first. It's the Giant Tough Road SLR1. It's a flat bar bike for expedition touring, I'd say, with front and rear rack setup. It comes with a 32 by 44 tooth crank and an 1142 in the rear, resulting in a 21.6 inch to 113.7 inch gear ratio. The geometry is 1.46 stack to reach ratio. This is more suited for a flat bar setup and you get a 450 chainstay, a wheelbase of 1,078, trail of around 78 and the bottom bracket is down to 70. You do get a uh, decent tire clearance and decent tires on this bike with 700C by 50 mil tires and clearance for up to 29ers by 2.2 or you can get 650s or 27.5s up to a width of 2.35 inches, which is really decent tire clearance for an adventure bike. And it weighs in at 13 kilograms or 28.66 pounds. Next up is a personal favorite in this list. It's the Bomb Trek Arise Tour. I do really love Bomb Trek bikes. I haven't ridden any. I would love to in an ideal world. 
<laughs> but I just love their look at the bike and checking out the specs of their bikes and stuff. They seem like they're good quality and hearing about what people say about them and all that kind of stuff. This bike in particular seems perfect for bicycle touring. It is on the heaviest side of things compared to other bikes in this list at just under 15 kilograms or around 32.4 pounds. And it is a bit pricier as well at around 2,250 bucks. But having that said, that money does go towards giving you a front dynamo light setup with dynamo hub and all that and you get your racks and you get fenders and you get bar and shifters it's a bike that's complete out of the box ready for an adventure ready for a bike tour coming with dynamo straight out of the box is incredible not many touring bikes give you that option and they're the tubus racks that come with the bike and and that's said to be a really high quality brand for bike racks. So the bike's built from a 4130 double butted chromoly frame and fork with all your rack and fender mounts and also internal dynamo hub cable routing. You get a max tire clearance of up to 700C by 40 or 700C by 35 if you're running fenders. With the crank setup and everything, it gives you a 19.62 inch climbing gear, 115.53 inch largest gear. And the geometry is really well rounded but yeah guys just checking out this bike it's quite a beautiful touring bike if you're after a real steal of a deal and an amazing budget touring bike i really recommend the massey giramondo this has been on a plethora of lists i've suggested at cycletraveloverload.com but this is truly like a really good value touring bike at just under 1300 bucks you get a full steel build it is a bit heavier it's one of the heavier bikes on this list at 14.5 kilograms or 32 pounds you get so many options to mount gear you get a front and rear rack setup you get traditional bar and shifters it comes with a 3x10 Dior setup which isn't the best quality it actually gives you one of the better climbing gears out of all these bikes at 18.78 inches and up to 112.13 inches for the largest gear comes with 700c by 45 tires or you can fit up to 29ers by 2 inches and it has capability to run 650b as well if you want to switch it up and also the geometry sees a stack to reach of 1.54 chainstay of 455, a wheelbase of 1072, a trail of 61, and a bottom bracket of 70. Another budget-friendly touring bike is the Marin Four Corners, coming in at just under 1300 bucks. Considered a steel gravel slash touring bike, it sort of hits a sweet spot there between gravel and touring. Weighing in at 13.7 kilograms or around 30.2 pounds. It's built from a chromoly frame and fork. You get a three by nine Sora drivetrain, which isn't the best quality and it doesn't really result in the best gear ratios as well. You get a 50 by 39 by 32 at the front and an 1134 cassette in the rear resulting in a 23.14 inch gear ratio up to around a 120 inch on the largest gear it comes with your choice of 650b to 700c by 42 tires and you get a max clearance for up to 47 on 700s or two inches on 650b tires the stack to reach ratio is 1.53 chainstay is 450 wheelbase is 1081 the trail is 65 and the bottom bracket is 72 mils. If you're looking for a light touring bike, the Focus Atlas 6.7 is a great choice. It's built from an aluminum frame, but you do get a carbon fork, which is a bit different. Also that carbon fork comes with double eyelets for mounting racks or cages up front and you get a rear rack at the back it also comes with a stand as well which is really beneficial for touring if you're riding with a heavy bike i've had this previously myself trying to sit your bike up on stuff becomes a nightmare sometimes and it's kind of an art form you've got to like balance it perfectly and they're just so difficult to handle sometimes but having a stand would be perfect even with filming i've thought about that myself is to get a stand because you can just like sit the bike up anywhere you don't need anything to lean it on and then go set the camera up and ride you know do that stuff but it does feature integrated cable routing which gives it a really nice sleek look you don't see any messy cables anywhere you do get a dynamo hub setup with lights front and rear the rear rack allows for up to 20 kilograms of gear 
and the fork can carry three kilograms on either side. Also, I didn't even mention you get mud guards as well, all for a price of just over $2,300. The total weight comes in at just under 13 kilograms or around 28 pounds. I couldn't really find the gear ratios for this bike, but it does come with 700C by 37 tires or tire clearance for up to 47 mil 700Cs or 51 mil 650Bs. Lastly is the good old Surly, the Surly Disc Trucker, not the the long haul trucker, the one I have personally ridden, I'm not sure they actually do a 2020 version of that bike anymore. Nowadays, they're, they're doing the disc trucker, which is essentially a long haul trucker, but the long haul trucker had rim brakes. <laughs> but comparing my experience with the long haul trucker, which is essentially kind of the same bike, although people have complained about the new geometry setup of this bike with it being too upright or the head tube being too big and that kind of thing. But personally, the LHT really held up amazing for me. A really strong, well-built bike. Surly actually do incredibly built bikes for affordable prices. But the thing about this bike is it's over 15 kilograms. It's 15.2 kilograms. And it's priced at around 1750 bucks. Gearing is quite good on this bike with a three by nine setup offering a 19.42 inch climbing gear up to an 111.4 inch largest gear. It comes with 26 by 46 mil tires up to a tire clearance of 2.1 inches for the 26s or you can run 700C by 47 mil tires with no fenders. Lastly, the geometry for this bike again is really upright and I think it's because of that, that really tall head so the stacked reach ratio is 1.58, chainstay is 450, wheelbase is 1,076, trail is 57 mils, which was dramatically different to other bikes, much shorter trail than most of the other bikes in this list, which I believe would make it more maneuverable, more twitchy in the steering, which is not really something you want in a touring bike. I still think that number is decent for touring bike specs, but it is on the shorter end compared to other bikes in this list, making front handling a little different than what's probably ideal, but I don't really think it matters too much. And the bottom bracket is 50 mils as well which is like 20 millimeters higher or less than all the other bikes we've talked about in this list so that means that the bike is a little bit higher off the ground which compromises its stability a little bit i'm not really sure if uh, that's a good thing i don't really think it is hey but having that said surly bikes are amazing and i'm all for them and i do believe that this this bike is is good um, you'd have to look further into it if that's something you wanted to consider, just something to keep in mind. Thank you guys for watching today's video. Hopefully it was helpful. If you have any other recommendations of other touring bikes that I didn't mention in this video, because I'm sure there's others, please make sure to put them in the comments down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm filming a video like once a week and releasing it on this YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe so then you can stay updated for when I release a new video and also give the video a thumbs up. It helps tremendously in the YouTube algorithm, gets it out there. So then it helps other people and uh, gets it out there to more people. I really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.